Uh, so, sir, first of all, uh, how are you today and how are you holding up during the quarantine? That obviously is uh, kind of first and foremost on everybody's thoughts today. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm doing well. I have a family of uh, three children. Uh, and of course, my wife. And we're in Burbank. And we're doing well. We're uh, finished off. We just, my son just finished first grade today. So oh, wow. Well. Good to hear. Good to hear. You know, I, I, when I get to talk to voice actors and animators and, and producers like yourself, a lot of times people say, like, in these specific difficult times that we're having, animation is kind of a, a solace and escape for people. But at the same time, on the professional side, a lot of them are saying they're actually seeing an uptick in the amount of work uh, just because animation is kind of an, an easier production process to go through during these times. So. Have you seen a lot of changes, either professionally uh, or personally, in, in the animation business? I mean, yeah. I mean, the great thing about animation is you can do it, you know, anywhere. Yeah. As long as you have a computer, smart supplies, and, you know, a, uh, you know, equipment and an internet connection or, or electricity, I should say. Mm -hmm. You can do it anywhere. And, uh, we kind of pretty seamlessly transitioned. I mean, there were some bumps in the road, but... You know, we, we left the office, I think it was around March 13th, maybe, um, Warner Brothers Studios, uh, Animation Studios, and now we, we transitioned to working from home really, really quickly. Everyone took their equipment home, Warner Brothers sort of little them to stay their computers and their, their synthes, which are our screen drawing tablets that we draw on, uh, and we got, you know, there was some, some tech glitches here and there, but we're, we're at full capacity, we're full production. We're, we're going, we're doing everything from writing all the way to a final mix. We actually did a final mix where we had one, our mixer, Charlie, on, is allowed to go on the lot by himself, and, uh, you know, we have a back and forth, he sends me previews, I give notes, talk to him on the phone, and, you know, it's, it's been really productive, and, and it's, it's, it's funny, some artists, some other crew, there's been a little dip in production that's seemed to be more productive than ever. So I think it's sort of a case by case, but as a whole, we have close to 50 people working in Burbank, and we're all working. That's crazy, though, just to think of the logistics involved with that. Now, now you correct me if I'm wrong, but have you know roughly 20 years in the business, both from the artistic side, the production and writing and creating side. So, you know, has would you say that your experience in the industry? I don't know that you can ever really be prepared for something like this, but would you say that, you know, that flexibility, that ability to adapt, has that kind of prepared you for this, being able to take on this challenge? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think also we were kind of a, a well-oiled machine going into the pandemic. Um, it was, we, we, we've been all working together. I, I started the project in the fall of 2017. So, and then we started production early 2018, early January, I think was our first hire. And so we were, we were moving. So I think that we all sort of knew each other. We knew the process. We know our pipeline. We know, you know, and, and we have great production people, great production manager, great line producer, you know, people that just, it's all your people, right? It's all that it comes down to having great people and great director, great directors, great art director. It's just, Supervising producer, um, I mean, it's, it's just, we had a really solid team. I was really proud of the team I was able to put together for this project. Artistically, um, it's probably one of the best productions I've ever been involved with. Um, as far as the level of talent, it's pretty unreal. Um, I, I think it reflects on the results. I think I'm really super proud of the shorts quality. Yeah, and I've had a chance to check out three of the kind of full episodes. So six of the story segments, three of the interstitials, which were just absolutely fantastic. They're both kind of like this nostalgic kind of nod to the originals. They have that kind of familiar feeling to it, but they also have this new kind of energy and a really kind of clean look. Uh, and I love that you guys went back to some of the original music too and then freshened that up a little bit. But, you know, 20 years uh, in the industry for you, but I believe this is your first time involved with a Looney Tunes title. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So it all started where I met with uh, one of the creative executives at Warner Brothers Animation that I had done from another company. And uh, she, had, she had got just started, started pretty early, start, started at Warner Brothers. She, she, she called me, we, we usually had a lunch about a year, every year or so. So she, 
she, I was, you know, usually I would probably gear towards just doing original things. Sure. Because it's, you know, sort of a passion. And people have done that in the past. But I have such an affection for Looney Tunes, I was like, well, she doesn't want to really know if it's going on that much. She was talking to me about a different project, and I was like, I don't want that project directly, but not that much. I just said, can I, can I direct a Looney Tunes short? <laughs> Just, just one. Right. Because you know? <laughs> I just love it. I mean, it's sort of why it, it gets, you know, it's, you know, it hit me at an early age. I started watching the video. Learned about the two famous directors and all that. You know? And it was, I think she was like, well, we have this new thing in development of, of doing a large amount of shorts. You should come and be the same minister. So I went and I met Sam, and I didn't have anything prepared other than just. I always knew what I would do with it. And it's this. I just said, I would just go back to my favorite era of the Looney Tunes and sort of try to capture the 20, you know, 2018 or 2017 time. What I feel makes those shorts and those characters so great. And I think certain things helped, you know, Mickey Mouse shorts happening at Disney. You know, certain things in the business happen and it makes it okay to do it. You know, like yeah. a lot of throwbacks of up and certain things I think help this retro. It's okay if it looks a little retro, right? It's kind of cool. So, and I just wanted to do that because it, it's just, that's just the way I think it should be. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily cool. Yeah, I think it's cool, but you know, I just, that, that's what those characters should be to me. They're the style and the energy. So it was, I just verbally pitched and said, I, I, I feel like. No, I could do with this. And I would go back to sort of the mid forties era where Bugs has a lot of energy, Dappy, 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 and you know, try to capture that surrealism and energy, visuals, funny drawings. There, nothing will ever touch the classic shorts. Nothing will, but you can love them and you can sort of use them as a source of inspiration and, and passion to try to capture the magic. And, and share it to a new generation and add some modern humor to it and add, you know, some modern look in an art direction, look more sophisticated, some sophisticated art direction. Make it look great. Yeah, and I think we're we're on the same page there because I, I love that era, those classics that you talked about, but I also love what you guys have done with this modern version. There's not a whole lot of really, you know, modern touch touchstones or, or contemporary nods to anything. It feels timeless. It feels like you could have just lifted some of these stories uh, with, you know, a fresh and cleaned up animation, um, into the modern era, which I love. But you were obviously excited about having this opportunity, but was it daunting when they were like, yeah, we're going to need 80, <laughs> 80 of these stories, so get to work? Yeah, 800 minutes, or it's a thousand minutes. We're actually doing a thousand minutes. That's crazy. 800 will be on HBO Max. Wow. The other 200, who knows? We'll have one of those. <laughs> but, but it's great. The great thing about it is there's a couple of things that I think you know, as work, somebody who's worked a while in the business and had a lot of experience putting shows out, um, was that we had no standards of practice. Mm. I think that was the biggest thing. We didn't have the show sold to HBO Max because there was no HBO Max. Right. This was an initiative made through Warner Brothers proper, just as a company to go, we need to bring these characters back in a, in a great way. And, you know, with Sam Rogers' wisdom of going, the only way to really do it, if you want to bring it back, is to not constrict these artists with, you know, standards and practices and all these little things that that you have to deal with. And we had no we hadn't sold the show. We just it just gave us a budget to make it because they knew they could sell. So it's you know, who's not gonna buy well, somebody's gonna buy Looney Tunes, mm-hmm. right? Right. So they just just said go and we just started making it. And sometimes we went a little too far and sometimes we you know, maybe you lost track, but we needed to do that to sort of try to find and capture them. Because those guys didn't have standards and practices. They just had Leon Sludge and you're going, make me laugh. <laughs> and then we'll you. Exactly. And that's pretty much it. And to be honest, that's kind of what we had. We had meetings with Sam and Audrey, and we just show up, and we go early on up to we'd be like, great, let me see the next one. And I go, when's it when going to drop? <laughs> when? When are we going to go, well, you know, that might be a little too much, or that might be a little, you know, they really let us. And I'm responsible, I'm a responsible producer and director, I'm not going to do something that feels out of line with these famous characters.
just that I love and respect and honor. You know, like I'm not going to try to shift what they're not. I'm going to try to honor what they are. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that definitely comes through too. Yeah. Yeah, and we, the other big thing was we right away. This is just one of the stories. I said I want to have every show at my fingertips. Mm. Over a thousand, I think it's something like a thousand thirty or a thousand thirty Looney Tunes shows. Some, some, some have never been released, like haven't been released in years. Mm. It's super hard to find. And of course, you know, I asked Warner Brothers, we don't have that. We have the DVD releases and all that, you know. And I said, well, I already own those. <laughs> I, you know, I need, I need all of them. All of them. So uh, while looking for talent and artists, I, I interviewed this one guy. And I went up to stuff and I said, I think we'd use for a I said, I'll talk to you. We went to lunch and I talked to him. And at that lunch, I mentioned I was trying to get after him. He didn't go to the lab. I had I go, you have all the shorts and the quick times? Yeah, I have every single one. And I said, well, I was planning on hiring you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I got it from an outside source and we put it up there. And that was, that was just a resource that I don't think anyone's ever had before. Beings, where we could look up at a number of, a matter of seconds of any short, scan through it, find the joke, find the shot, find the background we wanted to reference to be inspired by, find, you know, or just watch the whole short. Yeah. And that in meetings with the whole team, they would just watch a short and kind of break it down and go through it and sort of dissect why I think it works. We really look at the structure of Looney Tunes, the, the, the story structure, there is a structure there. And how gags, they never did anything like those types of gags, and how they started and really broke down their personalities. And that was other thing we did. The big thing was we didn't try to mix up the casting. Like, we didn't put characters together that really never went together. Right. And I think that really is a big thing because they're, they were designed to work off each other. So it, it was certain things that just sort of pinpointing things that I'm watching the old shorts. You know, why, did, why are we changing this? This is why it's perfect. You know, we did that kind of stuff. We, we wrote the stories the way we tried to get animation to come through. We animated stuff like that. So it was just a lot of, a lot of that to, to get. Exactly. Uh, before I run out of time with you today, I definitely want to dig into that kind of archival research that you did a little bit more. So probably my last question for you, but going through those kind of lost or forgotten episodes, what's maybe the craziest gag or sequence or even a character that you pulled out that maybe you didn't use directly or maybe uh, kind of influenced some of your approaches for these new episodes? I see a lot of them already. Uh, the, well, the big thing was there was a release of a black, uh, one, of, one of the exact shows was a release of a black and white Porky Pig short mm. that Brandon and Jerry Beck Shepherd shepherded out. And that came up right when I sort of started this project. We watched all those. And there was there was definitely the part the, the partnership of, of Daddy and Porky. I mean, I was familiar with it. You know, before, going, before starting this project, I'd seen some of the, some of the more 40 shorts. I never seen a lot of the black and white ones because I even I, I even have a laser disc selection. Remember laser disc? Oh yeah. And those are some of my favorite transfers. I'm a big film nerd. I, you know, I really respect animation and I try to find the best versions of all the products that come out. Um, that being said, I just feel like I feel like that's one of the stories of our series uh, that's not really. I think once it all comes out, people will see it, recognize it. Is that the team up of Porky and Daffy is one of the great comedic team ups ever done in cinema history. I just think those those they they put those characters together. They're so funny. The Zed ones, the Avery ones, the Fantastic ones from the late thirties. Porky was created in 35 and started, started making characters up and was, he was the first star. And then they teamed him up with Daffy, and Tex Avery created Daffy. Bob Clampett animated the first Daffy Duck scene. It's, it's just, it's just those two characters uh, are very special to 
Plus, and what are some of our favorite shows we did, and some of our favorite memories of writing and producing. And I feel like that was going back into the history of Long Island. That was something that kind of got lost because what happened was Chuck wanted to put Daffy and, and Chuck Jones work with Daffy and Bugs together. And in order for that comedy to work, he sort of had to alter Daffy's personality. Mm. And Daffy sort of thought he sort of became this sort of crazy, greedy asshole. You know? <laughs> right. And, uh, pardon my French. Sure. But, uh, he, and, and, that, and that means that they did that because Bugs kind of has somebody to play off of, right? For that comic book sort of work. Which I, I get, and some of those shorts are some of my favorite, and their tunes are great. But the, the duo from the late 30s was such a, like, Laurel and Hardy type, or Abby Costello type duo that it's just so much fun because you've got those two archetypes of this crazy Abby Dog, and that is every man working day to do the right thing and be constantly responsible. And that, just that, it's, you know, it's the option. It's, it's just fantastic. And we just put them in all these different adventures. And it's just, it's just been so much fun. Yeah. That really was the big yeah, you guys have definitely tapped into that magic, and honestly, I could just geek out with you about animation history all day, but unfortunately, I'm out of time, so thank you so much for your time today, and best of luck with the rollout. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks so much, man.